Hi friends, it's another Wiki Wednesday, and today we're going to talk about a really big dinosaur, the Brontosaurus. Daddy says that Brontosaurus isn't the correct name for them, but that's what the name of the article is below, so we'll see if he's right. This article was Brontosaurus size, so Daddy helped me trim it a little. You can find the link to Kittle, the kids' encyclopedia, in the description below if you want to read along. Brontosaurus facts for kids. Brontosaurus is a genus of sauropod dinosaur. Brontosaurus was originally named by its discoverer, Othniel Charles Marsh, in 1879. Hey, he also named the Stegosaurus from fossils he found. He sure was busy. Brontosaurus had long been considered a junior synonym of Apatosaurus. Its only species was reclassified as A. excelsus in 1903. However, an extensive study published in 2015 concluded that Brontosaurus was a valid genus of sauropod distinct from Apatosaurus. Wow, my daddy was wrong! Brontosaurus is a member of the family Diplodicidae, a clade of di gigantic sauropod dinosaurs. The family includes some of the longest creatures ever to walk the earth, including Diplodocus, Supersaurus, and Barosaurus. Brontosaurus is closely related to Apatosaurus in the subfamily Apatosaurinae. Description. Brontosaurus was a large, long-necked, quadrupedal animal with a long, whip-like tail and forelimbs that were slightly shorter than their hind limbs. The largest species, B. excelsus, weighed up to 15 tons and measured up to 72 feet long from head to tail. Wow, they are such huge animals. I bet they wouldn't even notice me, much less make friends. They would step on me instead. My stuffy brontosaurus is much smaller and lighter. Definitely not life-sized. The skull of brontosaurus has not been found, but was probably similar to the skull of the closely related apatosaurus. Like those of other sauropods, the vertebrae of the neck were deeply bifurcated. That is, they carried paired spines, resulting in a wide and deep neck. The cervical vertebrae were stouter than other diplodicids, though not as stout as in mature specimens of Apatosaurus. The dorsal ribs are not fused or tightly attached to their vertebrae, instead being loosely articulated. Ten dorsal ribs are on either side of the body. The large neck was filled with an extensive system of weight-saving air sacs. Brontosaurus, like its close relative Apatosaurus, had tall spines on its vertebrae, which make up more than half the height of the individual bones. The shape of the tail was unusual for diplodocids, being comparatively slender due to the vertebral spines rapidly decreasing in height the farther they are from the hips. Brontosaurus also had very long ribs compared to most other diplodocids, giving them unusually deep chests. As in other diplodocids, the last portion of the tail of Brontosaurus possessed a whip-like structure. My Brontosaurus stuffy friend has spikes on his head, back and tail. I don't think that is right. But then again, my friend is also purple and green, which makes him more fun to play with. He also squeaks which I don't think a real brontosaurus did. Too bad. The limb bones were also very robust. The arm bones are stout with a humerus resembling that of a camarasaurus and those of B. excelsis being nearly identical to those of Apatosaurus ajax. Brontosaurus had a single large claw on each forelimb and the first three toes possessed claws on each foot. The single front claw bone is slightly curved and squarely shortened on the front end. Doesn't sound like they were built for running, like your favorite pepper pie. History. In 1879, O.C. Marsh, a professor of paleontology at Yale University, announced the discovery of a large and fairly complete sauropod skeleton from Morrison Formation Rocks at Coma Bluff, Wyoming. He identified it as belonging to an entirely new genus and species, which he named Brontosaurus excelsus, meaning thunder lizard. Now that is a cool name. I have a cute name as pinecone, but pinecone definitely doesn't mean anything as cool as thunder lizard. 
Elmer Riggs, in the 1903 edition of Geological Series of the Field Columbia Museum, argued that Brontosaurus was not different enough from Apatosaurus to warrant its own genus. So he created the new combination Apatosaurus excelsus for it. Riggs stated that, in view of these facts, the two genera may be regarded as synonymous. As the term Apatosaurus has priority, Brontosaurus will be regarded as a synonym. Nevertheless, before the mounting of the American Museum of Natural History specimen, Henry Fairfield Osborne chose to label the skeleton Brontosaurus, though he was a strong opponent of Marsh and his taxa. Almost all 20th century paleontologists agreed that all Apatosaurus and Brontosaurus species should be classified together in a single genus. However, in 2015, an extensive study of diplodocid relationships by Emmanuel Schaup Octavio Mateus and Roger Benson concluded that Brontosaurus was indeed a valid genus of sauropod distinct from Apatosaurus. The scientists developed a statistical method to more objectively assess differences between the fossil genera and species and concluded that Brontosaurus could be resurrected as a valid name. All this arguing over a name. I got my name from the first human I ever met. And my puppy parents thought it was so perfect for me, it's the only name I've ever known. Isn't pinecone perfect for me? Paleobiology. Posture and locomotion. Historically, sauropods like Brontosaurus were believed to be too massive to support their own weight on dry land. So theoretically, they must have lived partially submerged in water, perhaps in swamps. Recent findings do not support this, and sauropods are thought to have been fully terrestrial animals. Diplodocids like Brontosaurus are often portrayed with their necks high in the air, allowing them to browse on tall trees. Though some studies have suggested that diplodocid necks were less flexible than previously belie believed, other studies have found that all tetrapods appear to hold their necks at the maximum possible vertical extension, when in a normal alert position, and argue that the same would hold true for sauropods, barring any unknown unique characteristics that set the soft tissue anatomy of their necks apart from that of other animals. Trackways of sauropods like Brontosaurus show that the average range for them was around 12 to 25 miles per day, and that they could potentially reach a top speed of 12 to 19 miles per hour. That is super fast! I can run pretty far and fast, but not anything like what a brontosaurus could do. I tire out too quickly and have to take rests. In popular culture, the length of time taken for Riggs's 1903 reclassification of brontosaurus as a patasaurus to be brought to the public notice, as well as Osborne's insistence that the brontosaurus be name be retained despite Riggs's paper, meant that the brontosaurus became one of the most famous dinosaurs. In fact, brontosaurus often appears as a synonym for dinosaur itself. Brontosaurus has often been de depicted in cinema, beginning with Windsor McKay's 1914 classic, Gertie the Dinosaur, one of the first animated films. McKay based his unidentified dinosaur on the apatosaurian skeleton in the American Museum of Natural History. The 1925 silent film The Lost World featured a battle between a brontosaurus and an allosaurus, usually using special effects by Willis O'Brien. The brontosaurus is the main plot focus of the 1985 movie Baby, Secret of the Lost Legend, in which a family of brontosaurs are found living in Africa. These and other early uses of the animal as major representatives of the group helped cement Brontosaurus as a quintessential dinosaur in the public consciousness. Sinclair Oil Corporation has long been a fixture of American roads with its green dinosaur logo and mascot, a Brontosaurus. And as late as 1989, the U.S. Postal Service caused controversy when it issued four dinosaur stamps, Tyrannosaurus, Stegosaurus, Pterodon, and Brontosaurus. Wow, now I see why the brontosaurus is such a big deal. Ha, I'm so funny sometimes. These guys were so large, they probably wouldn't even notice little old me. I'm glad my brontosaurus friend isn't full-sized. It's interesting that so much arguing happened over the name that even my daddy got it wrong. But he says it's okay to get things wrong, as long as you own up to it. That's all for today.
Come back next week for another dinosaur chat. And I'll see you on Friday for our next chapter in Master Frisky. Thanks for learning with me today. Bye.